This is the Toffee Web Podcast. Hello, Blues. Welcome to the Toffee Web Podcast, where we prepare to strap ourselves back into the roller coaster that is the 2023 24 season. It resumes this weekend following a welcome three week hiatus, which Maybe the fans have needed uh, more than the players to recharge their batteries. Everton travelled to Bournemouth on Saturday looking to end this painful winless run that stretches all the way back to mid-December. Uh, we'll get the chance to see whether this uh, warm weather trip to Portugal and the benefit of those three weeks off have improved things on the pitch. I'm here with Andy, Paul and Adam. Uh, Adam Singh, as you missed out on the last pod, I'll start with you. Uh, describe your uh, mental state as we go once more onto the breach. Yeah, uh, it has been nice to have that break probably probably not as nice as uh, going to Portugal this time of year, but I do feel as though Saturday has the potential to feel a little bit like a, a Sean Dyche slap to the bonds as I kind of go back to all things ever. And it's been it's been really quite pleasant actually. I, like on a personal level, I've had a nice couple of weeks, um, but I've, I, and I don't know how much of that is down to a lack of all things Everton. Um, seeing Jordan Pickford getting. Uh, Lambasted in the uh, in the press, kind of brought back a, a sort of feeling of feeling of pride and a, a sense of wanting to defend. And um, and with Saturday coming close, there's there's a, a bit of excitement, but there's also a lot of nerves. And suddenly, I'm starting to feel a little bit more washy in my stomach. So maybe maybe I don't need everything in my life. Maybe things are a bit nicer. Maybe I I kind of. <laughs> walk walk a little taller and uh, have, have have a bit uh, a bit of a nicer atmosphere around my home. But um, but no, it's I'm, I'm excited to see, as you say, what that change has done with the players because we are blessed with not too many players going on international duty. Obviously, Bramthwaite's um, gone out with England for the first time. Pickford, as we mentioned, Anana played last night as well. Coleman starting tonight. That's interesting. Um, that's that's certainly something to talk about ahead of Bournemouth. But um, I think the the proof will be in how beneficial that trip has been, both for morale, more importantly, I think for fitness for this big run of games that we've got, where everyone feels really important, doesn't it? So yeah, like I say, a bit washy in my stomach, but also excited to uh, excited to get back into uh, the normality of all things Everton on a weekend. How about you guys? <laughs> yeah, uh, Andy, uh, Paul, you and I talked last on the last part about potential changes we'd like to see in the team that maybe Sean Dyche takes in terms of personnel and approach. Anything changed for you on on balance of, based on what you've seen on the international break, thought about, ruminated on? Uh, just one thing I'm flabbergasted by was that he's, Seamus Coleman's gone and played twice in in four days and we've, we've struggled with Ben Goffey, uh, in the team. And, um, I think everyone, nearly everyone has said, haven't they? Like, Oh God, you know, you know, make a change here. They you know, get, get, get something more attacking on. And I think the, the common, I guess, misconception now from some of the comments, which Seamus has, has said is that he's been, hasn't been in, you know, he's been injured. Hasn't been quite ready. Hasn't been fit, fit enough to play, but he's just gone and played two, four, 90 minutes. Uh, for Ireland in the space of a few days and then come afterwards and say, no, I've been fit, I've been fine. So why on earth he hasn't been in the team? I'm, I'm very frustrated by that. Um, if that, you know, you have to take that on face value. So, um, and it's just starting to feel a little bit like, I guess we'll see what team lines up on Saturday, won't we? And um, yeah, it's starting to feel a little bit like that sort of, you know, like Michael Keane's stubbornness towards the end of last season. So it finally became a little bit, you know, almost a little too late and he had to change him. And I don't know where this like, throwing Ben Goffey into the team and then resolutely sticking with him in the team has come from. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by that. And th- just having Seamus Coleman go into play two games and I didn't, I didn't see every game, but yeah, from what I understand, they did, did, did pretty well. Um, just shocked me really. So I really hope that, um, that's, that, that, again, that could go either way. You might look at it as Seamus, well, I don't know, can you, can you handle three games in just over the week? Or will he see that as like, yep, he's fit enough to get into the team and play? So I really hope it's the latter because that's a change I'd really like to see uh, teammates. That's probably the one, the one glaring observation of the of the international break that, I, that, you know, that, that I've concluded with. 
there's no real reason for, for Sheamus to not be playing. And let's hopefully that hope that that's the case. I'm with you on that. Oh, hasn't it been terrific these three weeks? Just, 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 just round that off now, just by saying <laughs> yeah. it's been a lovely time. I've had uh, headspace. I've concentrated on other things. It's, I've been happy. I've, I've been so happy. Um, just blissful, isn't it? Uh, I, 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 I'm with Paul. I, I, I don't quite know what the scenario is with Seamus. Um, I can't see a reason why he wouldn't be in our team if he's fit. Um, just because. Well, Sean Dyche tends to pick players he trusts, and you would imagine Seamus Coleman was well in that bracket, wouldn't you? Um, mm. So, um, yeah, strange one that. But um, maybe, maybe they were kind of um, I don't know, waiting for the for the two Ireland games in, in a short space of time to see how he reacted to that, and then um, see how that affects his input for the rest of the season. But um, but no. Um, I, I'm, I'm where I was on the team, really. Um, I, I, I would like to see Calvert Lewin back in from the start. I'd like to see the two wide men refreshed and actually with some ideas and some um, some energy. Um, I think the middle two hopefully will be uh, Onana and Ghana uh, with the Corey in front of them. Um, Which Ghana? Ghana Gay. Thank you. Um, and um, and the rest of the team picks itself, I think. Um, that's how I'd like to kind of hit the refresh button, hit reset, and and hopefully, um, hopefully there's enough there. I mean, you also think about how the international break or um, the, the, the the gap in fixtures is, is affecting everybody else. I mean. I could. I mean, I imagine Nottingham Forest are going to be in a different psychological position than they were when they last played because they've lost points. Um, therefore, Luton's um, kind of um, mentality might change as well because their position has been altered. So I don't know. I mean, it's it's going to be interesting, isn't it, um, to see exactly how that little break and those movement of points does affect teams? Because I still think you know we've had. We've had one of the biggest disadvantages of the whole season in playing with minus ten for as long as we did, um, and let's see how it affects others now um, when when they start to move around. But but no, I'm I'm as you were um, enjoying the bliss and hopefully hoping that our best eleven comes together um, on Saturday, um, and, I, and I'm beginning to feel slightly nervous about that game because as all Bournemouth games seem to with us it just feels like a little bit knife edge if we were to go and beat Bournemouth and play quite well I think we could all go oh, okay this, this the, the, the break was good hey fantastic um you know looking upwards or you know at least mitigating the fact we might lose more points if we draw and play well okay if we scrape something and draw okay if we lose it I don't know it feels a little bit it feels like the difference between that win and that defeat on this particular weekend would feel really big it would, we, I think it would because maybe there is this kind of expectation that we've all thought okay you've had a break you've gone away and presumably worked on something Maybe, you know, maybe moving the ball around, passing drills, perhaps attacking drills, you know, shooting drills, maybe, and you know, maybe there's a, a um, just a feeling that, that they've, they've had a slump and then now they can get out of it. If we go straight back in with a defeat, I mean, that's going to feel a bit, a bit flat, isn't it? Even with those home games, and as we've talked on the last pod, home games mean nothing to Everton, you know, <laughs> if anything, it's more pressure, you know, more anxiety. So, yeah. Get get a win at Bournemouth, and and I think as we said on the last one, it just makes such a big difference. But you said that you said there, Andy. You know, hopefully our, our best eleven. I mean that that best eleven, based on on what we're talking about with the fullbacks in particular, doesn't it doesn't seem to be much consensus between Deitch and the fans, and maybe even some of the players. I mean, Seamus saying on on, you know, on international duty that he's not going to throw his toys out the pram. There is a subtext there that he's not exactly happy that he's not playing um and what that reason is you know i think we kind of speculated on the last one didn't we that 
it's the kind of Moisean thing where if I can shove another center back in there, I'll shove another center back in there, which is fine as long as it works. But if we're conceding goals, which we have been of late since Godfrey's been in the team, I'm not saying he's directly responsible for it, although obviously one of the penalties against United was, um, you know, his his lack of height against Brighton and West Ham. You know, again, as we said last week, perhaps. So if he's not... If he's not making that much of a big, big of a difference as a defender, then why have him in there at the expense of having no one down that right side who can actually attack? So I'd like to, if Seamus is fit, and of course we've got this this situation where when we get back, we've got three games in the space of a week. Seamus is not going to be able to play all those games, but I'd like to see him at least start one so we can see, you know, have him back in there and just see how the team reacts with um, with, a, with a proper attacking presence down the right, down the right flank. Um, the, the, by all accounts, um, Dan Juma is getting back to fitness. Adjusta Gay is on his way too. So I think Deitch is obviously going to have most most of the players fit and can pick a team accordingly that can hopefully win some matches. I mean, the argument with Deitch in the past has been the, the players need to be Deitch fit. But if he's fit enough... That the Coleman that is if he's fit enough to play two games of international football I right. presume that meets that high standard um, and likewise Patterson although I haven't seen it I believe he was at fault uh, for one of the goals Scotland's conceded the other day but again you've got another fullback option an actual fullback not a square peg in a round hole who's playing yeah. international football at the weekend it, it does seem like a very strange blind spot that he's he's got himself into but I think you're right in that if if you went around this pod, maybe most of us might kind of lean more towards if Coleman's fit, that's what we go for. Would we also take a chance on Patterson? But then you could ask someone else in the pub and they'd say, oh, do you know what, probably Ashley Young, actually. Or do you know what, Ben Godfrey hasn't been that bad. He's athletic, at least. I think it's a really, it's a tricky part of the pitch. And I think the bigger issue is, you mentioned it with the attacking wide players, and it affects how we play on that right-hand side as well. Um, that's that's the bigger worry for me. But again, hopefully that's what has been worked on in Portugal, beyond slapping at least one of those right-backs. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like <clears throat> Seamus like, ups the standards, though, doesn't he, around him as well, you feel like, when he plays. That's a, that, that's a big factor too, his leadership. And it's good output on the pitch. But, but I, I don't think I'm alone. I don't think it's controversial in saying that Ben Godfrey seems the, the the least suited of the four at right back. I don't think that's really you know too outlandish a thing to say. It just seems that it's very peculiar that you know, it's, it's not like oh we're sticking Ben's there because there's no one else available or because oh Patterson's out of form so he has to play. There's four options. You know it, 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 it's it's ridiculous really. And, and the man we went on about it a few weeks ago, didn't we? And the, the Man United that last half hour of the Man United game for. Why won't you change that position? That, that's often there's nothing to get back into this game, and we're two down. I, I, was, I was so so I just couldn't understand that. So hopefully it's a blind spot which he's um, seen <laughs> enough of to uh, to replay uh, to, to fix over you know the, the last few weeks. And um, fingers crossed that that whatever decision you make works uh, going to going into the Bournemouth game. Um, I'm backing us at Bournemouth. Um, I, I feel it's gone. We haven't won there yet in the Premier League. I feel that, that that's a record which needs uh, needs fixing. There's been well, there's there's been two very close. You know, we, we come, we've, we've snatched well draws from the from victories, haven't we? There one particularly memorable one. Um, so I, don't, I feel like most times we go to Bournemouth. I don't last season aside, I don't feel we played too badly. Really, just haven't really come out on the right side of it at any point. I thought you know last season was. In both games, an abomination. And it's an opportunity to put that right, I guess. Um, feels like quite a good time to play them, you would think. I guess they've had a bit of rest too, but really, they shouldn't really have a lot to play for now. They're, they're shipping a lot of goals, you know. It just feels like mm, could be a chance to catch them a little bit cold. Um, I hope Mikalenko's pulled through. He's had two, two tough games and, you know, two qualifiers, and well done for Ukraine getting through. He's, I hope that he's pulled through them two games okay. Um, we might see Ben Godfrey at left back then. Uh, so <laughs> so maybe, <laughs> maybe that'll resolve the issue on the right. <laughs> Take with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm go. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty hopeful uh, that we can. Uh, and I think as well, like a draw, 
so a defeat could be damaging because bear in mind, although it feels a lifetime ago, that would be three defeats on the spin. And that's never good, obviously. Uh, so we're going back a long way, obviously, there. But um, we really need to get that win. It's so long since we have, have won a game. We need to win a game at Bournemouth because we haven't done that yet in the Premier League. A lot of things we've got to put right. And he, I think we've got a chance, a good chance to do that on, on Saturday. I'm just looking at Bournemouth's last two games. And they've gone 2-0 down at home to Sheffield United and 3-0 down at home to Luton. I mean, this is a team that concedes goals. And not particularly to great sides. I mean, if and I would, if the same happened again or a similar happened again, you know, I know it's gone, it's slipped a bit recently, but we we defend far better than either of those sides do. Um, yeah. So you know, if there is a chance to get at them and to get the opening goal and maybe the next one, then I can't. Well, touch wood. Here we go. But um, <laughs> I, I can't see us doing something similar. Um, and you can obviously score goals against Bournemouth. You know that that's that's clear. Uh, whoever you are, um, so yeah, here's hoping. Here's hoping. I just um, like Lyndon was saying. You just hope that at some point in Portugal or wherever else they've been, you know, that we have some kind of combinations that work um, going forward with the ball because you know that that that's where the the break. That's that's where this. Apart from the fitness and the kind of refreshing everything, watching them for the last however many Premier League games that we haven't got a win in, that was, you know, almost like a godsend three weeks of time to work on things, you know, and and that's where you hope it's gone to to okay guys, how are we scoring a goal? How do we score goals? What patterns are we making? Because that's what we haven't seen. Um, where sometimes three weeks is a, a three week break is a is a nightmare, or it comes at just the wrong time, and maybe you've hit a bit of form or whatever. That cannot be said about Everton. This three week break was right where we wanted it, mm-hmm. and yeah. and you you just hope that they've made the most of it because if they haven't, and we they come back and it looks a bit like it did before, and it's all a bit laboured, and we're trying to draw our way to to safety, that's then their fault. You know, that's nobody else's fault. That's you know, that's not the commission's fault. That's not X, Y, and Z's fault. That's not Luton's fault for scoring. That is Everton's fault. You know, uh, and and they, they they have got enough players there to come up with a plan to win Premier League games. We've seen it. They've done it already this season. So, um, I think it it feels like if we're feeling a little bit of kind of pressure or anxiety going back into it, I reckon. They will be a little bit as well, or certainly Deitch might be, because you know the pressure is now on to sort this season out, isn't it? Really? Yeah. And then you know the good thing is that we are away from home, and yeah, <laughs> since obviously that last win, that last win obviously was at Burnley, and we can kind of discard the the Manchester City away because that's, I mean, you know that was we're onto a hiding to nothing in that game. Obviously the Wolves. Match was one of two, I think, that Deitch has highlighted as where things just went completely off the rails. But other than that, Spurs away, we unquestionably deserve something from that game. Uh, the, the Palace Cup tie, we kind of ground that one out. Uh, Fulham almost could have won, you know, better with a with a better header at the end. And, and we've, we, we win that one. Uh, and then obviously Brighton away, we should have won that one too. And, you know, United was a bit of a damn squib, but... In the main, we've we've we're set up to play better away from home. So that I think that's that's where my my main optimism comes from for this weekend is that we are better suited um, playing away from home. And and as you've been saying, Paul, just something's got to break up front. Some luck, you know, either either luck or it's just going to all come together suddenly, and and we're going to score a, a few goals. And as I say, I, I'm almost willing it. You know, if we can just get three points mm-hmm. on Saturday. The whole outlook just changes because I mean, at this stage of the season, you know, three points is massive. If you can get just three points on the board, not only psychologically, but just in terms of what it can do in the table, it's massive. Absolutely. Um, anyone got any uh, predictions? Want a one of one adventure prediction? Oh no, no, I don't. <laughs> 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 I think goals. I'll save you for that. <laughs> I, yeah. think, I think there will be. I think there will be goals. Yeah, um, 
I can see Bournemouth certainly scoring. I, I, I can see us scoring, to be fair. Um, mm. I'm going to say, let's take the bull by the horns here. A 2-2 draw, which is one of those that we'll probably look at next week when we come together and we think, we'll think, oh, if only this, oh, but if only that, and it could have gone either way. That's mm. what I'm going to go for. A, a really, a really stressful score draw. Yeah, I can I concur with that. That's what I was going to say. A draw as well. As much as I'm willing a win. <laughs> I'm I'm on the fence. I I think, yeah, we're we're right to highlight Bournemouth's kind of fragile defence, and obviously we saw that in the home game at Goodison, didn't we? That they will try and play out from the back, and when our players are fit and firing, we can press teams like that and cause them problems. The flip side of that is that out of our three top scorers, two of them don't play for us um, in Iwobi and Mope. So we don't score enough goals. Um, but I'm I'm still going to... I'm, I'm going to go 3-1 Everton. I, I think I think this might... It, it won't be bright in a way, but I do feel... And I've got to say, part of this was your kind of roller coaster pod last time out where it started very low um and I was, <laughs> I, was, I, was listening, I was listening to it in a little little cottage in the West Yorkshire sort of looking looking at the moors thinking ah maybe, maybe maybe I don't need football in my life anymore and then towards the end I was I was really positive and it uh <laughs> which uh, which is hopefully what this podcast does for people but um it did for me anyway so I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna go out on a real limb and say it's kind of a mini Brighton, and we do put in that consummate away performance. But Bournemouth causes a scare with a goal, so I'll go. I'll go three-one. Hat trick from Beto, all off the shoulder. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> trademark, what, trademark what, head of it. <laughs> yeah. like it. What, what would the what would the perfect hat trick look like with Beto? A shoulder, a... head, shoulder, <laughs> and toe, <laughs> an, an, an ankle scuff, and <laughs> yeah, winding <laughs> off his backside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they'd have to yeah. all be awarded by a committee. But, but, but <laughs> <that's gone. laughs> yeah, I'll take I'll take two one then if that's the uh, the yeah uh, I'll, I'll I'll sketch off that late Bournemouth equaliser you mentioned there, Andy mm. and uh, yeah and the VAR call on that one. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, two, two one win for me. Nice, I like it. Well, let's let's work on the assumption that we will record before we go to Newcastle. I mean, even if we don't, I just think it's. It's just too far to look ahead. We don't, we don't know what we're dealing with. Let, let's see what we're dealing with on, on after after Saturday. See what the, whether this break has has brought any change. And as we say, fingers crossed, it will bring three points. Um, but until then, Blues, thanks for listening. And as always, up the toffees. It's a, it's a dream.